Welcome to Prometheus 2017. Prometheus is a SQL server-based application designed for configuring enterprise-wide control systems. It comes with uh, the ability to add templates for things like switches, valves, pumps, I.O. modules. It has a unique concept of having this connector with it. And the plug and socket connector provides pins that we can intelligently connect between objects or assets. In this example we're going to use a switch to control a motor. Very simple example. And we'll see that by dragging a connection on we can actually publish a connection interface in an asset. This improves code reuse and code structure and creates more reliable and easier to commission programs. So in this case we've created the pump and the contact input as connections into this program. So we'll rename those so that it's easier to make references to them in the code. Then we'll go and add a program. Now we could add function block diagram, ladder diagram, or SFC. We're basically following the IEC 61131 standard because that's what the industry is used to. So we're going to create a simple logic example here where we're going to ask the motor to run when the switch comes on. But anybody can do pretty simple logic like this. It's when we want to talk to really detailed stuff within the controller. In fact, we want to be able to get at any function within the controller, whether it's a PID function or special time function or high-speed I.O. function, we need to be able to access it. So we can do that via a function block. So these user-defined function blocks, we'll see later how this is created, allow us to get at anything that the controller can do. So in this simple example, we're going to say when the switch is on, or it's day three, we're going to ask the motor to run. So now we go back to our canvas here, our workspace, where we can see everything laid out. And we can see the relationships between the devices, and we'll see that we're going to use the portion of the interface in this connector. Code's clever enough to actually strip out the stuff we don't use. So now we're going to wire to an I.O. module. Now by wiring to an I.O. module, we're actually committing to a brand. Right? We're saying at this point we're going to deploy to, a, a, in this particular case, a Schneider Electric I.O. module. And we can just check on the options for this module, which will change the interfaces available to us, as well as changing any of the configuration detail and potentially changing code within the object that's been modified by the option. Now we're going to wire up the output module, and we'll see these are in error. And they're in error because they need to actually connect to a rack. So the user doesn't need to know how to do this, they just need to basically follow the bouncing ball and complete the configuration. Now at this point you'd say, what slot do we plug into? Well we're assuming, as this is physical hardware, they know what physical slot their stuff's plugged into. Also they'd know the physical size of their rack and their part number, so they just select that from the tree. Now we're going to wire in a Galaxy. So we're going to hook a Galaxy, which could go in through an Ethernet module, but in this case we're going to go in through the I.O. interface, the Ethernet interface directly on the CPU. Notice we've got these red boxes, basically explain to the user what they've got left to fill in the work. The important part about this is you can fill in information when you have it. So you can start a configuration without all the knowledge and fill in the information as it's available because the error state tells us what's wrong. We can see now we have this nice diagram of all these connected components. Because they're connected components, when we assign them to a platform, they can be intelligently assigned. So the assignment framework works out, hey, these things need to go here based on the vendor you've chosen, based on this vendor-specific hardware, and it'll deploy the whole thing to a Schneider Electric PLC for us. We can look inside the PLC, and we can see the logic that's actually going to be deployed. So we can go to the code section here, and this is also a diff window, so we can see the delta between something we're going to deploy and something we've already deployed. And we can see the actual logic, the ladder logic there, transposed into structured text. We can also see the contents of the function for the day of week. Where did that come from? Because this is one of the important parts, is how do we get at the more detailed stuff that a processor can do, and how can we create usable functions? So if we look inside, we'll see that there's a declaration for, in structured text, for getting time. We'll also see it's declared for three platforms. So each platform is declared individually. You'll also see that we can put HMI pins on our function block as well, so that when we drop a block in, it can come pre-canned with the entire HMI configuration along with the block. This also improves reuse greatly. So that's where this logic came from that we're seeing that's going to be deployed. So now we need to actually get the code into the controller. So what we do is we deploy to an XML file. The XML file provides us portability to actually now take this XML and execute it wherever the control software is, because we need to have access directly to the vendor software, and it may not be on this machine. So now we run a loader, and the loader is an application 
specific to the vendor's application. So it will now talk to Schneider Electric Unity Pro. And we'll see a preview of what's going to be deployed to the system, as well as the ability to see the um, full hardware configuration and all the components that are going to go to the controller. But we'll also see tampering. So we have a tamper window where we can see the delta. That's this tamper window here. Once again, you'll see the same piece of code again and again, but now it's ready to go into Unity. So it was built in Prometheus and now it's been tokenized and parsed into the final product. And all the memory and necessary framework to support it within the controller is automatically declared for us. We'll see down the bottom here that the simulator, the Unity Pro simulator, is being impacted by the deploy and it's now switched into the running state. Once the control is up and running and the code's been parsed correctly, the loader will go on and now update Orchestra. So now it's going to go and make instances of Orchestra objects for us and it's going to connect it to the physical I.O. in the controller. Now the cool thing about that is it's also going to create the DI object, it's going to configure the DAS, and it's going to create all the relationships directly into the code. Because it's been configured from one location, we don't need to configure this interface. We know that the symbols in Orchestra, or the Orchestra objects, are bound intimately to the logic. We don't have to test that. This means we can now commission directly from the HMI screen. We don't have to commission from the PLC code. In fact, we don't even need to see the PLC code to complete the process. So now we've deployed, so the load has gone and deployed the objects for us. We're going to quickly create an app so we can put a window down and then see what the code looks like when it's actually executing. So we're going to create a quick window demo and we're going to see that it's created these instances for us for the motor and for the switch. We'll drop those on the screen and we'll switch to run mode. So now we're actually going to exercise this and it's communicating directly with the simulator. If there was a PLC there and we put in a PLC address, it would be communicating to the actual PLC at this point. What's really cool is our objects come with full simulation built in. This allows us to actually emulate and test the process even without physical I.O. So we're able to actually simulate the switch and turn the switch on and we'll see the motor go into a starting mode. So now our motor is starting and ready to run. We can also debug this from inside Prometheus. So we want to be able to see this in the language it was written in so that if there's an SOP or anything attached to it, we can actually see the logic executing the environment that we developed it in. So now we can see the logic here saying it's running because of the switch, not because of day of week three, because clearly we're not day of week three. So now if we went and turned it off, we would see that the animation is now off. So we can see the direct response. We can even toggle variables and set information from within Prometheus, just like you'd expect in a debug environment. Okay, so now what does this really look like as far as the PLC is concerned? Let's go and have a look at the PLC code behind this that's supporting all of this functionality, including timers, alarms, counters, etc. Let's have a look. So we'll start Unity Pro, and we're going to actually suck the logic out of the simulator. It's also saved on disk, but in this case we're actually going to go and talk to the PLC directly and ask it for its logic. You know we configured two I.O. modules. We said there was an input module and an output module, and we had the corresponding logic. So Prometheus has to be able to actually declare those modules, which you'll see there on the rack. It also has to put the logic in. There's the PLC logic, and once again, there's the same logic we saw before. The simple ladder rung and the day of week function below it. 